Welcome to this Analyst Angle on the Cube. I'm Bob LaLiberté, Principal Analyst with the Cube Research. Now, today we're going to discuss the importance of being able to effectively and efficiently manage and scale modern edge environments. Now, given the rapidly evolving edge landscape with all the proliferation of IoT and OT devices and sensors, the explosion of AI use at the edge, especially for things like computer vision, scene analytics, and so forth, and also the need for real-time insights, we're going to explore how organizations can leverage solutions from Zadata to deliver a cloud-like experience, but for these modern edge environments. And to help me out with this, please welcome Saeed Wissal, the founder and CEO of Zadata. Welcome, Saeed. Thank you, Bob. Great to be here. All right. Well, let's get started. There's certainly been a lot of news lately about the importance of the edge, and especially to the enterprises with organizations, as I mentioned, they're starting to instrument and collect a lot more data from that edge so it can be processed and analyzed, uh, ideally, so that they can drive up productivity, quality of their product, performance, et cetera. I'm wondering, you spend a lot of time in this space, obviously. Are you seeing the same thing from your customers? And, and why do you believe the edge is becoming more important? Yeah, um, yeah, no. So first of all, absolutely. I think we are seeing an inflection point around edge computing in the market where I think people are moving from talking about it to actually doing it. Uh, it's kind of what we had expected to happen over time as this is a new way of doing things and a lot of enterprises need a little bit of time to kind of wrap their arms around it. But effectively, what's been happening, Bob, I think there's two trends that kind of collide here and, and make edge computing happen. Number one is obviously cloud computing. Uh, you know, everybody is moving to the cloud or is in the cloud today. But more importantly, I think everybody that is building a new application moving forward, they will build it in cloud native ways with the presumption or assumption it will run in cloud environments. At the same time, to your earlier point, more and more data is being generated outside of the cloud and data center at, you know, in distributed environments and OT environments, machines, factories, cars, name it. And, you know, they're generating a tremendous amount of data. And that data needs to be analyzed, processed with software. So either you're going to upload all the data from all of these sources to the cloud to process the data they're using the cloud native software, or you're going to figure out ways how to take that cloud native software and push it to the edge and run it very close and highly distributed. And that's what we saw when we started Zadita, that that was the model that customers would be doing. And that's really the model that I think is happening right now as we talk to our customers. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. And it's something that I've seen as well. One of my favorite expressions is cloud native doesn't mean public cloud only. Yep. While it certainly originated there, we are seeing more and more organizations deploying those, uh, those modern applications at those edge environments as well. And especially because, like you said, they don't want to be hampered by the delays in sending that data. If you need real-time business insights, that data needs to be processed as soon as it's generated or as soon as possible after it's generated. So certainly, I think the combination of all those things really driving a lot more importance of the edge for these uh, for these enterprise environments and being able to take advantage of those distributed environments to to drive business goals essentially. Yeah, totally. But one thing I think, and to your earlier point, is when you start developing cloud native software, it's not just the fact that you may use containers and modern tool stacks, but also how you deliver and and continuously do, to kind of do CI CD and manage that software changes as well. Because if you think about a SaaS company, any company out there, they're updating the software stack multiple times a week. They're doing the kind of the cannery and then sort of the production rollouts. And people need that exact same experience, even if the software happens to run inside a machine or in, in a factory or in a car. And that's sort of, I think, that cloud native complexity that comes in when you start running cloud native software outside of a data center or cloud. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. And it, it ties into the next thing I wanted to talk about, which is, while this is great, to be able to take advantage of those applications at the edge. Unfortunately, deploying them at the edge uh, isn't always that easy, right? You've got a highly distributed environment and there's a lot of challenges. So even things like, you know, how do you ensure consistent hardware and software at the edge? How do you make sure you've got great connectivity there? Is it secure enough? And then one of the ones that typically I see a lot of is that there's a lack of IT skills at these sites and or that necessitates the high cost to deploy resources to each location every time they have to manually do an add, move, change, update software, et cetera, which just isn't sustainable. So I'm just curious, 
I mean, those are some of the things I'm seeing. What are your customers reporting as their challenges when they're trying to build out and modernize these edge environments? Yeah, we kind of bucketize them in three areas, and I think you touched a couple of them. I think number one is the the diversity of the edge is mind boggling. Like the because depending on where you run, how much data you're processing, what your network connectivity is, and all of that, your edge environment is unique and different. So you have different hardware, different network connections. Um, even the application stack can be quite diverse because, yeah, you're running cloud native software, but typically this, the, the data is coming from some legacy device or something that's already there or a machine or whatever. And the data may not always directly come from a sensor. You may need some Windows application or things that convert that data into like, you know, packets in some way, right? So you, that diversity and the stack that comes with that is, is really um, complex, uh, especially as you scale it. And, and you kind of almost have to embrace that. You can't like fight it. You have to kind of accept the fact that that's just the way the edge is. Um, the other thing we're seeing is you touched on it is security. Now, obviously these things are connected to the network. So network security is sort of a given, like you have to make sure that, you know, nobody can hack these devices over the network or hijack them or whatever else. But, but also you're dealing with physical security because a lot of these devices and nodes are not necessarily in physically secure locations. Um, so as soon as they're running there, how do you deal with the fact somebody steals your edge node or use the USB ports to try to install software locally? So that, that's another, you know, I would say attack vector that does not really exist in the cloud or data center because you kind of physical security, taking care of that, but you don't have that in, in the edge. And the last thing I think you touched on is scale. Like take these and then scale them to 10,000, 100,000 endpoints. Uh, how do you deal with, with all of the operational aspects that come with that? We saw with, with CrowdStrike, like one wrong update, the immense impact it can have. So how do you deal with that things can go wrong? Like how do you roll back? How do you create an environment that's sort of robust enough and, and fault tolerant enough Th at scale? Those are sort of the three things we see uh, are big challenges for our customers. Yeah, um, yeah absolutely. And that, that brought up a whole different way of how do you arc the, how do you make sure that you've got visibility into where your recovery is for business resilience and so forth, right? So being able to have visibility becomes super important for those, yeah. for those organizations. Um, so certainly there's a lot of challenges that these organizations are facing and how they're going to be able to manage and scale their, their edge environments. So let me put it to you and ask you, how is Zedita helping organizations overcome all of these challenges? Yeah. Great question. So number one, what we early on saw is that, you know, if you look at any of our customers deploying edge computing solutions and infrastructure, we talked a little bit about the diversity of the stack. There's, it's also an ecosystem play because the hardware may come from a vendor, the application may come from a different vendor or even built in-house. There may be system integrators involved to sort of, you know, kind of integrate the solution, deploy it to support it. And you may even need cloud companies because at the end, a lot of the data still gets sent to the cloud. You don't necessarily store your data long term at the edge. You process the data at the edge and then you send it to the cloud. So it is it is a bit of an ecosystem play. And, and because of that, you have to have sort of this open philosophy. So, so part of it and how we enable is we actually created an open source edge operating system called Eve. It's inside the Linux Foundation. It uses Linux. But I'd say just like how Android used Linux to build a great mobile operating system, we used Linux and kind of further, you know, uh, enhanced it and frankly made it lightweight and really small and sort of focused a lot around security um, to make it the premier edge operating system to, to deploy these applications on regardless if they're modern or they're more like legacy applications that may be running there. And the entire thing is API driven. So there's no username, password, you can't log into that. So that's kind of one thing we created and we donated to the Linux Foundation. And so that's sort of what our customers are using today to deploy that. And that provides the security and that flexibility at the edge, regardless of what hardware and what application you're running. Now, at the end, when touching the scale uh, concept, when you start deploying 10,000s of these nodes and each of them running a copy of the software, then you need a way to orchestrate and manage all these nodes. And what we've built is an edge orchestration service. It's a SaaS product, runs in the cloud. It's always available. We, we, we maintain it and, and continuously improve it. And so the nodes call home to this um, operating, this uh, cloud service. And then on this cloud service, the way we think about it is just like how you use AWS console or Azure dashboard or whatever cloud interface to deploy your services and run them in the cloud, that cloud service gives that same experience, but now it's deploying applications running on these edge nodes, highly distributed anywhere in the network, anywhere in the world. Got it. Well, that certainly sounds like you would drive up the efficiency. One of the things I wanted to, to ask you about, though, obviously, 
a lot of these edge locations are very remote. A lot of the connectivity is sketchy. So what happens if, if your management control is in the cloud and you've got your on-premise operating system, but you can't connect to the two? How does that get handled for organizations? Yeah. Yeah, so we had to kind of flip it around. Like in a data center, if you can't talk to a server, it's probably down. It's a, it's a bad thing. The server should always be available. To your point, if it's any edge node sitting on a satellite network, it could be fully functional, fine, but just can't get to it because the network's down, satellite on reach or whatever. So we had to sort of build this architecture that presumes when nodes are not available to the cloud service, everything is normal. Uh, and then what we do is even though you may be updating all the other nodes that are available and they're kind of like running new versions of software, you have to have sort of an eventual consistent architecture where those nodes, when they connect back to the cloud, you converge them to the latest required state. So that was part of that API that we defined as part of the open source and it's sort of built in. So we have customers that are sitting on satellite in the middle of the desert in like oil and gas, for instance. Sometimes these nodes are offline for a while. No problem at all. As soon as they come online, they converge sort of like, okay, what's the latest versions, sync up all the telemetry data. And um, you know, and then they're back online as if nothing happened before. Um, so this is a really big, you know, I would say, you know, need in the edge that you know, again, if you have an architecture built for cloud, it's not easy to deploy it at the edge without this. Absolutely, that sounds that sounds like it's definitely going to be needed for those those really remote locations that don't always have that connectivity. So it's great to hear that they they stay operational and update as they can when they can and so forth. Yeah. So. Sounds like you put a lot of thought into what you've what you've built and what you've brought to market. I'm curious if you could share with our listeners a little bit more about maybe some specific examples of how customers are leveraging the solution and what type of benefits they're getting as a result of it as well. Yeah, now great question. Um, so first of all, our product really does well with large scale edge deployment. So that's sort of naturally where we have most of our customers. Our customers are typically routinely deploying thousands, ten thousands of edge nodes, because uh, that's really what we built it for. And, and because of that, we ended up kind of working with some of the largest companies in the world. Uh, the challenge with that is that they're not always very comfortable to share their names and what they do because of competitive reasons. But I can tell you a couple uh, in particular that I'm super excited about, like one customer um, that that is actually a public customer is a company called Bob's out of Switzerland. They build packaging machines. Um, so these machines are used to create packaging materials like carton boxes or uh, wine boxes or whatever. And they do everything from printing to folding to you know embossing all, all the things. And we run inside these machines and they have thousands of these machines deployed around the world. These are running at their customers. And we're part of what they call Bob's Connect, which is their a connected machine product that allows them to update the software in these machines and improve new capabilities on the machines through software. And basically uh, what they are doing is think of it like CI, CD to a machine with, with mm -hmm. our solution. So they're basically updating these machines regularly with new capabilities. Um, and it's of like, as if we're running all that software in the cloud, yet it's running in all these customer environments. So it's a really great use case. Um, we're running in big machines on like industrial computers, communicating with all parts of the machine. Um, so they've been they've been actually a great customer for us as we sort of saw the deployment of of uh, scale and um, in, in kind of more an industrial setting. So that's one customer. One of our other larger customers uh, is an uh, one of the top oil and gas field service companies. So they do anything between drilling to wireline, meaning they measure wells after they drill them, to well site monitoring. So we've deployed with them a lot of nodes in all the different divisions. And so they kind of call us their edge platform, just like they call you know Azure their cloud platform or their edge platform. And so the, the interesting thing about this is we're sitting on satellite networks, we're running the desert, we're running in the Arctic, we're running offshore as well. And, and we're giving this customer incredible you know, agility and capability to sort of continuously uh, remove the need for like, you know, lots of staff on site, which is a safety problem for them because they don't want to send people to these dangerous locations. The ability to like have even unmanned sites and be able to run smart software that allows them to, to collect that. And as part of their wireline operations, we actually help them to analyze wells faster than they did before. Because in the old days, they would have to actually physically move data from collecting it at the well to a data center to analyze it. Now they can actually analyze it inside these well site trucks um, and in real time. So by the time they complete the job, the data is analyzed. Their customers uh, already can get sort of access to, to all the data that was collected out of the well which basically helps them understand if they should immediately start you know, doing production or, or not, um, like of, of the well and getting whatever is in, in the ground out. Um, 
It, similarly, in solar, we have a customer called PV Hardware. Um, they're part of Grand Solar, which is one of the larger European renewable companies. They operate us in hundreds of solar farms, unmanned sites across the world. Similarly, all the software needed to operate on a solar farm is running on this data architecture. Um, and it's been also another great use case. So not are we only in oil and gas, but also renewable energy and green energy. And we have certain customers that are even in the transition uh, for both. So that's been a great use case uh, from an energy point of view. And then maybe a, a final one, one of the largest automotive companies in the world has actually deployed with us a solution in over 10,000 locations. Uh, this is going to their dealers and service centers, replacing laptops to service cars mm -hmm. and update software on cars with an edge computing solution they built. Uh, and the idea is very simple. They have hundreds of countries where they have in each location, many, many uh, dealers. Um, and they needed to basically put in this, this compute node that was completely centrally managed from their teams, uh, from headquarters, running very advanced and software, also software that's sort of sensitive because it communicates with the car, reads out logs, can update soft firmware in the car. Uh, so security was a, was a big uh, challenge for them. But they're able to basically dramatically reduce the time it takes to update a car when you drop it off at, at a dealer. Not all their cars are network connected. Not all their cars can be done over the air updates. So this is kind of an essential part of their after-service um, um, care to, to their customers. Excellent. Those are, those are a lot of great examples of, of how you're able to help organizations. I have a question for you coming out of it, though, as I was listening to it. Are, is your solution being sold directly to the enterprise to deploy, or are you working through OEM partners for them to embed it in their technology that goes out? Yeah, great question. We have both. So I would say some of the largest enterprises prefer to work directly with us because obviously they have quite unique needs and they have usually a lot of their own software teams and deployment capabilities. But we've also uh, signed up a few OEM partners with us. So Rockwell Automation, one of the leaders in industrial manufacturing is, is an uh, OEM customer. They have a product called Factory Talk Edge, which is basically an industrial edge platform powered by Zedita software architecture and a marketplace and everything else. And so that's going to machine builders. It's going to anybody who does things like discrete manufacturing. So conveyor belts and robot arms that, that need sort of edge computing in these environments. Uh, think of uh, CPG, think of automotive manufacturing. Those are all big verticals for this specific customer. Uh, we have a similar partnership with Emerson, which is uh, worked, uh, works on process automation. So this has to do with liquids and power and you know, basically controlling valves or controlling um, you know, uh, switches. Uh, kind of very similar to that, like uh, they have this thing called the distributed control system that communicates with all the valves and, act and sensors in like a chemical plant or like a pharmaceutical um, you know, plant or whatever. And then they built something called the Delta V Edge Gateway, which is an edge appliance that the data scientists can use to run application that feeds off the data from the control system and in real time gives them operational insights. When they launched that product, they had basically a standing room at their event because for that industry, moving from analyzing stale data and, and asking every time for a refresh of the data versus running cloud native data analytics and AI on real production data in a secure way and without impacting operation, was like a revolutionary step forward. So that's been a great, great OEM for us. Yeah, absolutely. Those sound like just tremendous benefits for organizations to get. And so clearly any, any organizations with a lot of distributed environments, especially it sounds like those in manufacturing and so forth with equipment distributed, there's a lot of value to be gained by leveraging your solution, by being able to accelerate that time to do the moves, adds, changes, to ensure that it's always up to date, to enable organizations to do that local processing of the data to get those real-time business insights. I think yeah. that's going to be something that obviously I think a lot of organizations are going to be very interested in. Um, listen, I want to thank you for joining me. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have today, but Saeed, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Uh, really love the conversation and thank you again. Yeah, you're very welcome. And I also just want to thank everyone who's watching this analyst angle on the importance of managing and scaling edge environments on the Cube. Uh, for more information on Zadita solutions that are looking to you know, power their edge environments, please make sure you visit their website.